welcome, welcome everyone to a brand new episode of Conversation for Days podcast. Yes, the Rev Frankie is back at it again. I got my man's Khalilo. And this week we are bringing back a guest, guest for days. And you know what? I'm, before we introduce him, I want to say shout out to all of our fans for days for yes. subscribing, liking, comment on YouTube or even our audio listeners on Spotify and Apple, giving us love and we rating. See you. see you. And even giving us you know, DMs and saying like, hey, we want more guests, more people. So that's what we're doing. And is, this is going to be interesting. It's a topic that we've never really talked about. And I think we have a specialist here, someone that can really give us some great knowledge about it. That's so right. to start off, um, I want you know, our guest to introduce himself a bit, just like a little intro. So just give us um, your name, um what else what else your age and then a little bit about just yourself what do you do in life and what not out the whole resume here yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yes uh first and foremost i want to thank you my hosts frankie and khalil for having me uh i gotta say this is my first podcast and uh i've seen what these people do and i just want to say i respect it man because it's you know it's, it's a lot of hustle to, to start your own thing like this so for real man like shout out um anyway my name is Matei. Uh, I'm 23 years old. Um, one thing about me that really stands out is like, uh, I'm a big fan of authenticity and uh, I've been a personal trainer as my career. And this is kind of uh, where like it's taken me in my life and my passion. Yep. Uh, it's always been fitness in terms of uh, bettering myself and uh, constantly improving and, you know, growing. And uh, I feel like there's all, this has always been something that's been bringing me more forward and more uh, to like level up. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. I'll stop there. Yeah, actually, I mean, if, you know, just want to shout out your, your tag as well, just so at least you know people can Instagram. Find where yeah, people man, can follow me on it on uh, Instagram. I post a lot of stuff on there. Uh, my my Instagram handle is MCX Fitness, and you guys can find me. Uh, I post a lot of cool workouts for people to do. Uh, post a lot of my content in terms of uh, what I do in terms of my bodybuilding career and uh, how I'm training and how I like to train people. So yeah, man, a lot of good stuff. Absolutely. And we see what you do, man. We love what you do. So, you know, it's yeah. a pleasure having you here, you know, to have this nice conversation with us. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's and right. Lilo, do you want to start with you know, a couple questions for uh, Mate? I got a bunch of questions for you, man. So, you know, <laughs> let's see here. Yeah. First and foremost, I guess we should start from, from the beginning, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, um, at what point did you realize that, you know, hey, I, I want this to be my passion. This is something that I want to, you know, show other people how to how to become better in. And because, uh, you know, your, your page is very, it's, it's very inspirational. You have a lot of information. You have a lot of like knowledge in what you do. Right. You know, certified, uh, certified um, trainer. Uh, uh, yeah. Cer certified trainer. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, what, what, what did that, where did you discover that that was your passion? Hmm. So when I when I was 13 or 14 years old, my dad bought a bodybuilding book. Nice. which I carry around with me everywhere I go just because it's kind of like my, my starting point, like that book, like made me essentially. Nice. Um, and uh, ever since then I was a very skinny kid in, in school and uh, in public school, I remember, and I posted about this on my Instagram, you can probably go and find it somewhere, but mm -hmm. I always remember being in an assembly and a lot of people got called up for track and field meets. Mm -hmm. And I remember that moment of like, you know, I'm waiting for my name to be called up, but I, I just think to myself, like, I know my name's not going to be called up. And then I asked myself, like, well, what are you going to do about it? Like, why, why don't you go and make that happen? Then like, let's go, you know? Yeah. And uh, so ever since then, like, I remember I was in seventh grade and in eighth grade, I remember I signed on for track and field and I got ribbons. I got my name called up and I succeeded, man. And I, I pushed it and I never knew that I was capable of such things like that. And that was probably like my starting point for actually, you know, doing fitness in some sort of way. I didn't know I wanted to be a personal trainer. I didn't know I was going to be a bodybuilder, but that was like my first like landmark to, to crush in terms of like what I could do and what I thought, excuse me, to what I thought I was capable of. Nice. Uh, and then you flash forward to high school. Yeah. I remember, you know, like you, you want to impress people. You want to be like the big shot in school and what else. And I remember that was like one of the, one of the things that I thought about. Um, but like eventually, like, I don't know, I started training with my friends and I started training them and I realized I was really good at it. And I was like, you know, like getting them to start to want to come to the gym. And like, my friends did not like going to the gym at all, but like they saw that I was going and we would hang out 
we would like, you know, joke around. It wasn't anything serious, like where we're like yelling at each other and like, you know, motivating. It wasn't like that, not yet, but um, it was just good to like get inspiration involved into others. And I remember some of the friends that I brought to the gym to work out with me, they work out to this day because of those sessions that we had. And so I thought to myself, you know, like if I could have that impact on people, then like, let's, let's, let's see what else I can make of it, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, so I, I decided that I wanted to go to school to be a personal trainer. I wasn't interested in, uh, chemistry or any, I don't know, subject like of the sciences or political sciences or whatever you would say. Uh, mm-hmm. I was always into like the, the movement stuff, anything that had to do with moving around like gym class. Obviously I was super hyped for gym class because who isn't right. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. But I just remember I was, uh, I was always into like, like looking at what people do, how people move around. Like I would just examine people in, in high school. And that was kind of like my thing of like, well, why don't you, why don't you do something in relation to that? Like, it doesn't have to be like, you know, going to school for something prestigious or fancy, like just do what you like, man. And like my parents, they did a great job of encouraging me to do so. And like, they didn't push me to do, to like go be a lawyer or a doctor yeah, or yeah, something yeah. like that. You know, they were just like, yo, like whatever makes you happy, like go do that. And I remember just like having such a feeling of warmth with that. Cause a lot of the people that I went to school with, their parents were pressuring them to go and do other courses that they didn't really want to do. And so for me, I just kind of felt like, Hey, like I'm going to pursue this. And next thing you know, flash forward a couple of years. And here I am talking to an ex client of mine who I used to train on a podcast. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 To us, man, because yeah, this man was my personal trainer. I gotta say, man, yo, I took a lot of tips, uh, great tips from this man and it helped me, it helped me a lot. So, uh, I gotta say, you know, this uh, a sad day was when, um, you, you, you moved away, <laughs> right? You, you went to it. Yeah. Day. Yeah. Ever since then, I didn't even have a per- another personal trainer. I was like, yo, get me Mate or nobody else at all. Like, <laughs> honored, man. Honored. Yeah, man. Honored. So, yeah, I know a lot of people are going to love this episode and learn from this episode. So I yeah. do have to ask you uh, as well, you know, so part of the come up, you know, there's always a dip, right? There's always that downside or that, that, that struggle, that, that space, right? So uh, mm-hmm. like, what was your, like, how did you deal with that form of like discipline or how did you deal with those kind of bad moments that would come up and like challenge you every now and then? yeah method or yeah um i'd say like when i when i was prepping for my bodybuilding show like when it would get like let's use that as an example because that's like that's a time where it gets pretty like grueling and you know you're you're forced to ask yourself whether you like it or not you're forced to ask yourself like why are you doing this is it worth it do you like it do you like what you're doing to your body do you like how you feel throughout the day when you're feeling tired and like you're dragging you know what i mean like those were questions that I asked myself. And ultimately I'm like, you know what? And someone said it to me and it said it in a crystal clear way of like, whenever you do bodybuilding, you're ultimately dedicating six months of your life, possibly more um, in, in case you want to pursue it further, but you're, you're essentially dedicating six months of your life for 10 minutes on stage. Wow. And to some people that's, that's a terrible return investment. They're just like, what? Like, that's it. You know, like you'll get a couple of pictures, you'll go on stage, you'll do your little dance and then you'll come back off. That's how people say it usually. Um, but for me, I'm like, you know what? It's more than that because it's, it's, I feel like through doing bodybuilding, I love it. I love bodybuilding. I love training like a bodybuilder. It's really fun to me. It's, it's fun to, to progress and to constantly challenge yourself with new, uh, new weights and stuff like that. That's how I'm choosing to challenge myself now. And uh, throughout those tough times, I remember being like, well, like, you know, you're, you're doing this for a reason. Like you're doing this to prove to yourself that you're capable of so much more than you think you are. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I remember. And I remember being like, you know, walking down the street and I'm seeing other people who, I don't know, like they say they're smoking cigarettes and like, they're like, whatever your prerogative, your life, I'm not judging, but I'm just saying like, that's not a lifestyle that I want. And that's something that I thought to myself, like this bodybuilding career that I'm choosing to do, this is a lifestyle that I want because this is something that constantly pushes me to grow. And I'd much rather be growing through harder times than regressing and staying stagnant through the easy times. 100%. Ooh, that's that's going to be quoted right there. I hope you know that. But what at what age did you realize like this is your lifestyle for the rest of your life when it comes to bodybuilding? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I... I did, uh, I did powerlifting for a few years, actually. Like, really? while I was training Kalilo at that time, I remember I was a powerlifter. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was cool and all. But, like, I, I remember, like, thinking to myself, like, I don't really want to do this. Like, I like the egotistical, like, lifting of, like, you know, how much you can lift and how strong you are. And yeah, it's still, 
similar to bodybuilding in certain levels. Mm -hmm. Um, But I remember bodybuilding being a much more artistic sport. And uh, I really, really liked that. And that's what really drew me towards it is that um, with bodybuilding, I got it. Like I, I looked at it and I just saw the way people were like posing and like mm-hmm. posing routines, man, I'm telling you, <laughs> if I have not watched the same posing routine, at least a hundred times by <laughs> Terrence Ruffin, I'll, I, anyway, if you guys want to link it to this video, cool. But if not, anyway, it's, it's Terrence Ruffin yeah. posing at the Toronto pro show. And he was absolutely phenomenal. He's a bodybuilder and he just like, moves so well it's so like fancy and artistic it's like a it's like an art you know what i mean and that's that's what really got to me so uh that's kind of what drew me towards bodybuilding from the first get-go that's oh, gold man uh, and that, that's true 100 what you're saying there like it, it is an art right so like um like how would you define the art of bodybuilding like what would, what would you kind of like what would be the words that would define what that is to you bodybuilding yeah uh let's say it's I like to call it a, uh, a chance for constant improvement. Like you're always going to be constantly improving to like, you know, improve your package. Yeah. Um, whenever you step on stage next year, you're always going to be better in some way, right? Whether it's up here or in here, it doesn't really matter. It's always going to be in some way you're bettering yourself. And that's like constant improvement um, and never satisfied. Like it's, it's always just like, you know, wanting to have more and more and more. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of like uh, accepting the fact that like, change is eminent right but like working with that change you know mm-hmm. and really like, just because you i just thought of a quote and it's uh it's when you uh what is it you say like you know the day that you sign on to be a bodybuilder is the day that you'll never be big enough uh-huh. oh, <laughs> you know like, and uh i remember hearing that and i'm like that is so true man so right? true <laughs> that's gold yeah just because you win gold it doesn't mean that that's the end game right there right you gotta- yeah man in your eyes you're like yeah I'm, like i remember some guys that were huge and i would look at them like dude I hope you know you're massive. Like, yeah. yeah, that's it. That's all I wanted to say. And they'll be like, oh, actually, not really. I'm like, do you see yourself? Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's always in their eyes, man. Like, they always look like, oh, I want more, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, but it's, interesting. But is there, um, Mate, like, is there ever, um, so with the bodybuilding, so there's no, there's no really limit then. So when it comes to your body, like, people are never satisfied. Is that the thing? Like, when it comes to yeah. getting big and having certain physique? I mean, it's, it's all dependent on what you want. So me, obviously I want to be bigger and like some people tell me like, no, you, you look good the way you are. And like, you know, you, this is good. Like my mom says like <laughs> people would kill to have your body. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. But like, I do want more, you know? And, uh, some people, they want more, uh, to the point where they're willing to go the unnatural route. And that's totally cool. That's their choice. Um, mm-hmm. uh, me personally, I've never gone that route for the next little while. I will not be going that route. Um, just just simply because uh, that's not something that I want to do. Uh, maybe it'll change in the future. Maybe not. Yeah. We'll see. Never know. <laughs> Nothing is set in stone, right? Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. All right. Cool. I like that. I like that. So is there like a bodybuilder out there that like, um, cause what would be the ideal like physique that you would, that you'd be like, okay, I'm, I'm good now. Let me just like, <laughs> let me not get uh, big or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and like you guys may not know who he is, but he's the Canadian champion and he won the Mr. Olympia show, which is like a big deal for bodybuilding. Yeah. Uh, his name is Chris Bumstead. He's six foot, who knows how tall. And this guy's like the perfect physique. You know what I mean? And he's got like it all. That's an ideal package that I want to have, but I got to be realistic in terms of my size. Okay. So there's a guy that I follow on Instagram and uh i i doubt he's natural but like that's something that i want to get to his name is i forget scott something if it comes to me i'll tell you but like okay there are people out there that i'm like you know wanting i'm, I'm wanting to uh i'm wanting to emulate in their physique style but i'm not uh i'm not sure that i can quite get there um you know in yeah. a natural standpoint right yeah okay hmm awesome and i gotta say man you know you've been talking about like you know your tournaments and everything like that why don't you take us through that like what was how was it like going to your first tournament and how do you feel oh, geez. going to tournaments nowadays you know <laughs> yeah you uh, have- so <laughs> first thing i've only right. done two shows in my whole life All right. i've only done two bodybuilding shows uh, my first one was with a coach who i actually met at anytime fitness you probably know her Khalilo. her name is jasmine she yeah, worked there okay. as a trainer Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was she was my first coach, and uh, she was great. Like as my first show, I felt like she brought me into the bodybuilding world in a very uh, calm setting, not pushing my body too hard, 
yeah. um, but also like making me look like the best that I could. Yeah. And uh, she was trying to do so like in the most natural, naturopathic way, I guess you would say. Maybe she'll she'll probably correct me for saying this, regardless. Um, this but anyway, she like I remember my first prep was not bad. It wasn't bad. Like it was like I felt tired, yes, but it wasn't like like I'm dragging and I don't like you know waking up in the morning stuff like that. Uh, that was good, and I placed fourth place in both categories that I signed on for. Okay. And then wow. this past year in 2020, yeah. uh, I I got another coach, and his name was Jared Little, and he uh, he's like he's a bodybuilder at heart. You know what I mean? And I kind of like, that's what I, I looked at him. I'm like, okay, like that's, that's my guy. Like he, he's a bodybuilder. He knows what it takes. He knows what I want that. I want to bring my best look on stage. And he talked to me. He's like, yeah, man, like, you know, I, I seen like your, your diets and stuff like that. And I would just, I would coach you a little differently. I'm like, okay, let's try it out. Mm -hmm. uh, so I tried it with him, dude, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> I don't know, like 12, 12 weeks away from my show. It was probably like the, that's where it got, like, it started to get challenging. And then eight weeks approached and I was like waking up and I was just like, give, give me food. And I'm like, you can see it in my face. There's like videos that I have of myself and I look starved, man. Oh, like man. I got, it's, it's what we call as diet face when like your face is like sucked back like this, like you got yeah. nothing, no meat to your, to your body. Oh, you know what I mean? Thanks. So anyway, he, he pushed me really hard and I was able to get third place in both my categories. So that's, that's like my improvements. You know what I mean? And that's only been two shows that I've done so far and uh, confirmed. I am not done with this yet. I'm going to keep going. So, so we'll see what from, next year hold, man. So that's from the like, trajectory that is going through, you're going to finish second on the next tournament and then first. And then first. <laughs> God willing, man. God willing. I hope so. That's perfect, man. That's awesome. But um, regarding what Kilo, that same question. So, because in my mind, when I'm looking into bodybuilders, right, and they're doing the whole pose and everything, I'd be asking myself, like, for a normal person, I think that everyone has a great body. And when you do pose, I'm like, well, that looks good. That looks good. So how do even judges decide on who got the better? Like, do you know the whole metric of that? How do they decide who's the so, yeah. The first thing that you got to know in terms of bodybuilding is that the whole thing is, unless you're doing like bodybuilder bodybuilding because okay. uh, there's different categories. There's like the men's physique, which is like the board shorts, you know, like the, the playboy looking guys who wear yeah, like swim yeah, trunks yeah. and they mm -hmm. don't show their legs off. So I, I did that one. That's one category that I did. And then there's classic physique, which okay. is like where you wear like the speedo and like, it's more artistic, more flowy. And then there's like bodybuilding, which is just like raw muscle, yes. no art to it. It's just like how big and how good can you look? You know what I mean? Uh, so during those three categories, uh, sorry, Frankie, what was your question again? I got, I got <laughs> distracted. Yeah, no, no, no. I just, um, like how do judges decide on like, yeah, who yeah. Wins or who got the better body? I don't know how to. <laughs> so it's all in terms of proportion, but one thing that you got to know is that, uh, mm -hmm. whenever you're, you're doing a sport like bodybuilding, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's smoke and mirrors. So what that means is all, it's all illusion based. Like you, uh, you, you, the way you move your body and the way you pose, it, it makes it look like your waist is slimmer, your shoulders are wider. So it makes you look like you have that like X frame, like big, like for me, my, my category specifically is classic. Classic bodybuilding means like you got to have big legs, a slim waist and broad shoulders. That makes like that X shape. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. So whenever, whenever you go into a bodybuilding show like that, if you can have that frame and if you can like, you know, like honestly, man, uh full on i'll be blunt like asians yeah they are they are like they, they, perfect they, physique uh -huh, perfect okay. physique man yeah, yeah. and and more times than i can count i've seen asians they got a slim waist massive legs without even trying and broad shoulders like they just awesome. pop them. you know what i mean yeah, yeah. Yo, shout out to the asian bodybuilders out there yeah, yeah <laughs> man straight up dude straight up there's a lot of them they look they all look great yeah. um there was one guy that i competed with named brian ho uh or sorry ryan ho and he uh he got i think first yeah he got first place in my category and he just he looked great man he bought a, a wicked package with him uh anyway he he looked good and he was an asian guy and he just anyway he brought a great look um but regardless just to answer your question frankie it's it's a lot of just like that x frame like that's what they look for is how how well you can like you know develop your body that's why next year you go back to the drawing board of like you know uh i'm gonna do uh, more shoulders. I'm going to do a lot more back to just work on different muscles in my body, you know? Interesting. Okay. Wow. 
I didn't, I mean, you know, that's why we invited him because I would have never yeah. guessed that, like, I didn't know that, that X shape, your shoulder got to be in a certain way. Like, this is fascinating. Proportion, X, X, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, X proportion. I like that. I like yeah. that. Okay. All right, cool. At least I know which kind of framework to, you know, work out to. So, <laughs> hey, if that's what you want to do, man, you can. Yeah, you know how. <laughs> that's gold. That's gold. But yeah, man, yo, okay, I guess another important thing too, like, because um, I feel like this has been the hardest thing for me is uh, nutrition. Right, because I mean, you work out. You can work out as much as you like and everything like that. But if your nutrition isn't up to par, then you're kind of working out for nothing, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I mean, like, why, why don't you take us a little bit through that? Like, um, I, I maybe even just with your diet that you uh, you do to prepare for like certain qualifications, certain shows, you know, things like this. Yeah. So uh, with nutrition, in terms of a health standpoint, you don't want to look at bodybuilding because bodybuilding is not like it's not it's not a, a sport that does like it's healthy for your body. You know what I mean? Like it's, it can be done to an extent where like, you're not hurting yourself too badly, mm-hmm. but there's, there's a lot of aspects to bodybuilding that are not healthy to the human body. Right. Okay. Uh, but whenever, so whenever I get closer to my show, uh, my carbs get like deduced. So I get less and less carbs as I get closer and I keep my protein intake the same. Uh, so that way I can still have like the same musculature and still feed them properly. Yeah. Um, but ultimately that's what happens is you eat less carbs and that makes you more hungry throughout the day. You can add fats in, there's a certain amount of fats you should have. Um, but those help satiate you, excuse me, a little bit better. Um, I remember I had at one point I was having just chicken breast with what I think an avocado or like a little bit of rice. Yeah. And I'd, I'd be eating that meal and I'd be done and I'm already looking forward to the next one. You know what I mean? So it's just like, it's a lot of like, like, as you get closer to the show, things just like start to wind down, you start to have less food. And like, next thing you know, like, you have to play your cards, right? Because if you you have five meals a day, and if you rush through the first three, and it's already like, what, one or 2pm, you have two more meals to last you until you go to bed. You know what I mean? So like, you got to have like a four or five hour gap in between one meal, just to like, make sure that you're not like 6 p.m. and you're going to bed starving and you can't even fall asleep because of it. anyway. Oh, that's <laughs> um, but that's what happens, man, is, you know, your carbs, like they slowly get cut down and you have a lot of food that gets taken away from you. And then based on how your updates go, like Jared would ask me, um, he would ask me like, yo, like uh, update me every Saturday. I'm like, okay. So every Saturday I would send him pictures. And then based on how I looked on Saturday, on Sunday, he would maybe give me something called a refeed which means that he would increase my calories for that day just to revamp my body, just to give my body a little bit of a blow up. Cause I've got, man, there's pictures of me and I look skinny, you know? <laughs> and it just means that like you've depleted the body to its fullest extent. Now yeah. you refeed it and then you do it again the next week. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay. And you mentioned, uh, so bodybuilding, like there's some unhealthy aspects about it. Like, um, can you enlighten us on like what they are? <laughs> oh, you mean besides the fact that you're starving yourself? Uh, but yeah, like, I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's hard, man. Cause I remember I'd be like tired and like my parents would see how I feel. And they're like, you don't have to do this, you know? And you know, like they're, they're old school like that. So like, Oh, why don't you just come, come to dinner with us? And I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking like, how dare you ask me to go to dinner? Yeah. You know what I'm doing. You know I can't do that. I want to have lobster with you guys. Like, what are you talking about? Oh man, yo, but uh, the lobster. Anyway, yeah. they're like, well, why don't you just have a salad or something? You know, like it, you could just do that. And I'm like, uh, it doesn't work that way. Um, but like that was one thing is you, you're tired all the time. Like if you uh, if you don't sleep well, good luck. Mm-hmm. Like that's when your sleep eight at least eight hours a day or a night. Sorry, it's essential. Mm-hmm. Like you need that because that's what fuels you your sleep becomes your fuel you know i remember i was training clients and i would be so uh depleted and so like you know low energy all the time that i would hype them up to hype me up so imagine if you're doing a set and i'm like sitting there i'm like dude if you can't hype this person up you're not doing your job i'm like what are you gonna do so i'm like literally i'm like okay come on give me one more give me one more and then by the end of the session i'm like okay okay i can do this yeah, yeah, I can do this. I can survive. You know what I mean? Hundred percent, hundred percent. I like that. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's go. Let's go. Shout out to your shirt too, man. Yo, you're showing us the shui. You know, so <laughs> we appreciate that. <laughs> you guys know where this is from? No, where's that from? No, no. So that's a uh, funny. You should ask me because that's a that's a show that I used to watch as a kid. Okay. And uh, if you didn't know this, 
I'm a big nerd. I'm a big like DC, Marvel, Batman, yeah, Spider-Man, all that, yeah. man. I love that. I love that stuff. So this was a Batman Beyond show that I used to watch when I was younger. And that was like my childhood. So this is a, you know how we say like dope, like today in, in today's society, we say, yo, that's dope. We're like, yo, that's cool. This is like another way of saying that. It's like, yo, that's shway. Anyway, okay, super fun, super funny. I thought, it, I thought it was cool. I thought it was appropriate, you know? That's dope, man. We're going to hop on that. So that's, that's shway. Random, random, random question for you, Mate. So when yo, you do your whole bodybuilding to, to get motivated, do you ever use uh, Marvel or DC inspiration? Like Batman or anybody, like you know what? I'm gonna be like Batman today and work at be like <laughs> some of the OSTs or soundtracks. <laughs> Tons, man. Tons. Okay. So right off the bat, uh the Man of Steel soundtrack. Uh like the movie, the Man of Steel movie. There's a soundtrack, uh, the original soundtrack to that movie. There's a song called Flight. And uh, that's when Superman flies for the first time. And I remember listening to that, and that just made me like Go over the stars, man. Um, but real talk, like Batman's a hardcore motivation. And like a lot of people would say like, yo, like that's kind of, that's kind of for kids, you know, like you should probably like move on from that and like look to like Dwayne Johnson or something. And not, not to say anything against Dwayne Johnson, he's great motivation, but like Batman in terms of how he motivates me is, is obviously the Christopher Nolan movies, man, like the Dark Knight. Um, there's a quote in there said by Alfred. And I will always remember this. My brother and I will take this to the grave. Uh, it's why do we fall? And uh, the answer to that is so we can learn to pick ourselves up. And that's kind of been like something that's like brought me along my life as I, you know, as I go. And like, if I ever have a hard moment, I think of that. And honestly, it's work, man. And it's, it's really become a part of me in that way. Like I hold it close because it's a very, very powerful quote. It is. It is. Yo, man, I like that. I like that. And I find not too many people listen to OSTs and I'm just like, why? <laughs> you know? Dude, I'm all about OSTs, man. Yes, like okay. they... Like during my workouts, man, like there's yeah. a bunch of movies that I literally just check their OST and it's just amazing. Right? Yeah, no, no. Hmm. That's dope. 100%. And actually, Mate, you mentioned um Dwayne the Rock. Oh, Dwayne, oh, well, I call him Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I know it's Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, whatever. The Rock, man, The Rock, yeah. The Rock, yes. Right. So just random question for you, right? Because you know, you're you know, you do bodybuilding. Would you because you know, Dwayne, the, you know, he's massive, right? Like you look at him, the way he works out, he eats, like he's a monster, right? And he used to be in WWE. And I remember I, I used to watch WWE when I was a kid. And then I saw some figure about bodybuilding. And I'm like, this guy looks like a bodybuilder, but he's not really like he's not he's not saying he's a bodybuilder. But if you look at him, like, like just his body, would you consider him a bodybuilder or no? If you had to judge him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hands down. He he trains like a bodybuilder, you know, like he, he used to be a football player. Uh, and he was a damn good one from what I heard. And, uh, so he, he trains like a bodybuilder. Now he, he trains like that to get ready for movie roles. So he, his next movie is going to be black Adam, which is one of yeah. Superman's villains. That's and he, he's been training hardcore for that. Just, just for that role alone. Cause he wants to look the best that he could to really represent this anti-hero in the best po uh, way possible, you know? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he, yeah man. he answered my answer. I, I I said yes too in my mind. I was like, yeah, this guy's a bodybuilder. He's just <laughs> Hardcore, man. Hardcore. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> awesome. Khalilo, did you have any other question? Uh, let's see. So, okay. When it comes to music, um, mm. do you find that it's much better to work out without music or with music? And, and, and why? Okay. Good question. Great question. Love that. Um, both for different reasons. I don't know. Sometimes... I've had it happen where I'm, I'm not like, there's, there's something about me that I just don't really need music. I just need to be, uh, it happens very rarely. Don't get me wrong. Like it happens very rarely when I'm like, you know what? I don't want music. Um, but yeah, man, for the most part, like I love music. I have, uh, I have beats blasting whenever I'm working out. Uh, even lately though, actually, uh, my brother suggested this to me and he said to listen to motivational speeches while you work out. Cause that's something that like, you know, helps you push through. And I tried it one time. Uh, a few days ago, actually, and it was pretty good. Like, it was actually, like, an intense workout, and it was good. It's just, like, you know, just fueling your mind with with what it takes to push yourself. Because, you know, like, music is going to be good and all, but, like, honestly, man, like, Lil Baby or whatever rapper you're going to listen to, it's not going to be telling you, like, one more set, man, one yeah. more rep. Like, exactly. when, when are they ever going to come out in a song and say that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, great rappers, cool. But like uh, sometimes motivational speech just helps you bring bring that one step further. You know what I mean? Yeah, facts. That's one hundred percent facts. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. another thing too. Uh, shout outs to um, 
to Justin for bringing this up. So <laughs> Justin Ferrer, you know, we see you. But um, mm. working out, have you ever worked out in the in the in the dark? If oh, so, like, how that. have you found it? <laughs> in the dark. Okay. Yeah. Uh, interesting question. Yeah. Um, I remember one time during lockdowns, I I went to a gym and it was just me and this other guy there and he wanted to keep the lights off and he was a friend of mine and I'm like, all right, cool, no problem. So I remember I even posted a video of me squatting from that workout and you can see that all the lights are clearly like down. There's still like a little bit of light so that way you don't trip over yourself and like, I don't know, crush yeah. or break your foot. But like, regardless, like he, uh, I tried it and it was, uh, I don't know, I prefer the lights on to be honest with you. Like I, I tried it once. Uh, maybe not like literally, I don't know if Justin meant it literally with like two lights turned off, like pitch black. Um, but I've tried it with like some lights off and it was, it was okay. Nothing, nothing yeah. special, but yeah. For sure. I tried, I tried it one time and it was actually like, it made me think differently about it. Cause it's like, okay, I guess, you know, with the lights, I, I feel like obligated to check out how, what my progress is and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, it made me think differently in a way where it's like, I can feel the exact muscles that I was working out to, uh, or I was trying to work out, you know, and, um, yeah, I wasn't too focused on uh, checking myself out or like anything like that, right? So at least yeah, that's man. what I found it useful. So that's why I was like, yo, shout outs to you, G. <laughs> you know? So there's there's a way that you could do that. And uh, it's probably just like, man, this is what I do sometimes because I get it, you know, like sometimes you're like looking at yourself and you're looking at yourself a little too much, yeah, you yeah. know, and you want to kind of dial that back a little bit. So I just wear like an oversized t-shirt or, you know, something like a hoodie just to cover it up, man, just that way you can go. And it keeps you warm because it's no more layer and more like it keeps the body heat in so it helps warm you up faster um uh, but it just helps like you know keep your brain focused on what you're supposed to do and not what you look like what you look like yeah 100 percent, man i like that i like that okay All right. and yeah, i, I wanted to yeah i wanted to bring something else too <clears throat> a bit um a situation that happened not necessarily in bodybuilding but he did mention uh Matea at the beginning about you know if you take you know drugs or steroids when it comes to you know that sort of discipline and like recently, yeah. I think it was the Olympics. It was like a runner. I think her name is like Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Richardson. Let me double check. Let's see. Let's see. You know, Shakari Richardson. So she got okay. banned because they they saw that she before like she took a test and they saw that she was positive in terms of um, like just um, I'm French marijuana marijuana. Okay, right? marijuana. So she, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and she tested positive, and then it became like a whole drama on social media. People mm -hmm. were like why did she get banned for only just smoking a little bit? Like, it's, it's nothing too crazy. And then when we brought you here for this topic, I thought of myself, I've always heard that, I don't know if it's true that so many people that do bodybuilding would take substance because they want to look a certain way, want to get the results. Is that true, Mate? Have you seen that trend in terms of steroids and substance abuse in bodybuilding? So, clinically... There, well, whatever, <laughs> let's just say regularly speaking, uh, steroids and substances like marijuana, I guess, fall. I would, I would say they fall into two different categories, sure. you know, just because like steroids are a little bit more intense and they don't, they don't work the same as like marijuana, for example, if you're taking marijuana by itself, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but steroids do have uh effects on you that that you know they can they can change how you act, they can change how you think. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally don't know specifics. Um, but I've known people who take steroids and I've known uh, that are, they've told me how they've, they've uh, gone through like paranoia uh, through like, you know, like uh, whatever, like not being able to control their emotions. Yeah. So steroids do have that effect on people, you know, and it's, it's something that you have to kind of take at your own risk and kind of really uh, do your research and do your homework and make sure that you're familiarize yourself with what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. um, but marijuana I don't know how that's that would different. fall into the same kind of category. Oh, no, no, no. I, I didn't mean to say, I just meant to say like off of that situation, I just felt like in your discipline, how the yeah. you know, steroids, you know, like, is it a big influence? Is it small, minor, major? Where would you categorize in your profession? Yeah, I mean, like every, I don't know, I'd say like every intense or committed gym goer would go through at least one or two like instances where it, it presents himself, you know? And I remember in college, uh, someone asked me like, yo, like I, I, I could, I could give you some if you want to. And I said, no, thanks. And I was really like firm in that. And I never really struggled with it, but just because I know where I stand and I want to, yeah. I want to see what I'm capable of naturally. You know, I want to see what I myself am capable of without the help of other substances. And that's something that I've stood by, uh, since I started doing bodybuilding, since I started working out, since I was, I don't know how old, 
you know? Um, but yeah, there's a, a lot of people do face that, that question of like, yo, like, do you want to go stay natural or do you want to go and take uh, anabolic steroids and see what you can do in a non-natural perspective? Interesting. Okay. And do you like for you, right? Like if you see, I don't know, for example, on, on Instagram, you see a person as a bodybuilder, can you see right away off of their physique if they taking something or not, or if it's the natural way? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what? There's, there's instances where there's like people who like, you know, like they, they've gained 20 pounds in like four or five months and you're just like, Hmm, did you, <laughs> what'd you do? You know, like, yeah, how'd you yeah. get there? What, did, what happened? Like that was quick. Yeah. Um, and I, I've, I've gone through what it takes to put on mass. And for me, maybe my body's different. Maybe I'm slower to the game. I have no idea. Um, but regardless for me, I've, I've, I know how long the time process is. I know physiology literally like you, you have, it takes a while for you to make some serious changes. Mm. Right. Uh, so whenever you see like people that like get like results really, really fast or whatever may, it may happen, you know, there's, there's certain like things that really stick out that make you think like, mm, I don't think that guy's natural, you know, and I kind of developed an eye for it. Um, but sometimes I'm, I'm blind to that. And I'll be like, no, that guy's natural. And then someone will look at me and be like, hold nudge me and be like, he's not. And I'm like, yeah. okay, all right. I didn't know that. Nice. You know? Yeah. Anyway, just to touch up on that too. I mean, um, in terms of like, you know, mass gain, like how, how long would you say it takes, uh, whether it's for you or just, you know, people that you've noticed in general, how long would you say it takes to, to actually build like one pound of like muscle? <laughs> yeah man good question <laughs> solid yeah uh depends on how how committed you are there's like if you like people people who go to the gym they go like five six times a week and you know they they get their eating under serious control and like it all works out for them they can put on like a pound of muscle in like a week or two man like it happens but like wow. mind you that that always happens at the beginning phases like whenever you first start working out those are called noob gains that's like the the street word for it if you will you know what i mean but like 100%. that's that's It, it gets harder and harder the more you go along, right? That's why whenever people max out naturally, they're like, yep, like you've reached your genetic peak. Like this is, this is it. You've reached the ceiling. This is nothing left. Then they go out and take steroids and then they keep going up. You oh, know what I mean? Because so, they can't like, plateau out for that. Yeah. You know, like you'll, whenever you start, you'll put on muscle really fast, but then eventually as you train more, you'll notice that it takes a little bit more time to put it on. 100%. Yo, that's good. Yo, thank you for that. Yeah. yeah okay okay i'm trying to think of another question maybe oh another question too so in terms of like sacrifices right that you had to do for what you love to do right for your passion so can you think of anything it could be maybe i don't know it could be like in relationships and friendship and things where you had to sacrifice because you were so focused on your bodybuilding like can you maybe mm -hmm. tell us a bit about some of the sacrifice you have to do oftentimes yeah um There was, there was times where like, I never really like, I don't know, lost, uh, or like whatever had serious losses in friendships from doing this. Like, it's just, you know, like I still love my friends and I still keep them close. And it's just something that like, you know, they, they see that I'm busy and they see what I'm doing and they know. And, uh, I make sure that I, I let them know that like, whatever, if, if time gets the best of me and I can't, uh, whatever be as present for them, then I make sure that I let them know that I still, like, I still care and that I still I'm not, this, I'm not letting this sport change me or get to me in any way. Um, but however, in terms of sacrifices other than friends and relationships, uh, there's been a lot of time invested. There's been a lot of like, you know, uh, things that I would have wanted to go to. I remember uh, people that I worked with, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, way back when uh, I was working at a uh, Mobadi, they were all going out. And I remember that I really wanted to go with them. But the next day I had a check in. Uh, to do and I couldn't afford to go out and drink and stay out late um, because the next day like I don't know what would have happened you know it probably wouldn't have been a big deal but to me it was mm -hmm. you know because I just said like okay man like this is your decision like fork in the road like where do you want to go you know right. um, are you going to stay committed to the process or do you want to kind of let the process take down a notch and go and pr prioritize your friends mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know I never went out with them and obviously like to this day I, I still think I'm like oh it could have been fun you know like it would have been fun um but I, regardless man i look at what i've achieved and i'm like totally worth it totally yeah. worth it not to say that those friends aren't cool um uh, but just like you know like i know i know what it takes and i know that the sacrifices i make are worth it and i just you know make sure that i i do so in the best way that i can 100 man and you know, i love that discipline man because it's really it's really hard to um 
to master that kind of discipline and, and that kind of way because there's so much so many influences around us so many things that like we want to do you know you, you mentioned eating too you know that was one of the things where it's like ah should i should i not so i mean yeah, just to actually stick with that kind of uh, that kind of a program man that's very that's very inspirational i appreciate you for that it's really nice it's good yeah man yeah okay. hey yo we've, we've gone through like, a little question here mate has been awesome <laughs> <laughs> and different question we went from competition bodybuilding to Dwayne the Rock to yeah. what about the Olympics yeah man <laughs> yeah. no challenges but okay it's been, it's been great so far I'm trying By to think way, of my, oh yeah go go yeah sorry I was just gonna say because I mean you know I, I like um like what do you have in store I guess for uh you know upcoming things like what's what's, oh, what's the future the program for you like what's, what's what's next on your bucket list here yeah man good question uh it's it's hard to like bob and weave your way through this pandemic hopefully like everything just kind of stays the way it is and uh you know we can keep moving and like becoming the closest thing we can to what it was like two three years ago yeah uh you know what i mean even though it feels like it was like yesterday that we got our first shutdown but anyway um i'd, I'd like to say like right now i'm kind of going through uh through like a little bit of a setback just because I have like some injuries that I'm dealing with and like it's mm. it's holding me back from from training and not to say that it's an excuse but you know it's just something that I have to like work through methodically and properly and just take my time with it um so next up I'd love to kind of get that in order to get my recovery work on point um this is an, again one of those tough times that you go through man and you know and you realize that like you know like are you committed to this as much as you say you are that's and right. are you going to practice what you preach to your clients? Are you going to kind of like, you know, set that example and be the person that you're supposed to be in this situation, mm -hmm. you know, and there's been a lot of, of tough lessons that I've learned and like a lot of things I've had to go through to kind of realize like, man, like you gotta, you gotta think about this in a different light and you gotta think about this in a different perspective. And I've had a lot of different people um, help me through it and they know who they are and um, I can't thank them enough for what they do for me. And, um, it's, it's been a learning curve, man. And that's something that I'm hoping to get past, but eventually once I do get past this and I will, um, I'd love to do another bodybuilding show. I love to, to step on stage and kind of bring a whole new look and, and do some, some crazy things, man. I'd love to, I feel like there's no, there's no limit. There's no ceiling that I have above me. So I'm just kind of going with it. And, uh, I've been doing a lot of stuff on Instagram. I really kind of, I'm looking to build a, an online personal training business. So that's kind of been underway um kind of familiarizing myself with what I should be doing and how to do it uh so it's been cool you know it's been a learning curve and I'm gonna keep learning I'm gonna keep growing and keep getting better and that's that's all I can say for now man you know stay tuned watch me as I go like uh, catch on for the ride you know what I mean hey, we all gonna be watching so you know hey, my step back for a major comeback I like I like that <laughs> follow this man on Instagram you'll follow his live day by day he'll go from an injury to not an injury just follow my man like yeah. yeah dude that's it Frankie that's it man yeah. Uh, anything, what's the biggest thing that you've learned from like your your injuries bro you know like is uh it, yeah. yeah man uh a that's a, that's a hard question you know like it's it's frustrating because this is probably like the first time that i've dealt with something that's so um limiting does that make sense like yeah. honestly like just to give you guys full disclosure like what happens is my my forearms uh, they've been constantly under a lot of use and a lot of stress mm -hmm. uh, just because of like you know like me training um, me training my clients on top of that and like loading stuff for them and kind of always using my hands and uh, whatever, like, however I've been training in the past, it's always been putting my forearms under a lot of pressure and stress. So that's been a big thing that I'm kind of trying to get through. And uh, it's gotten to the point now where I, I can't, I can't really, uh, I can't train the same, you know? So that's something that's been a setback because, you know, like I want to, I want to be the beast that I was, you know, like when you, when you go to such a high and you're forced to kind of take down a notch, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a hard shot to the ego, you know, but it's, it's, if you, if you handle it right, it will really build you and it will really strengthen you in ways that you never thought. Um, so that's kind of what it's been like, you know, it's just like uh, coming back to it every day. Like I've been doing yoga, like no tomorrow. Um, I've prioritized my recovery work. And if this is the lesson that I'm trying to learn, then consider it learned, you know, and I'm, I'm going through that process and it's uh it's been, it's been hard, but I've learned to be patient. If I want anything to answer your question, Khalilo, it's been yeah. to have patience and to, to stay with it and just to keep, keep your positive attitude on because it's so easy to dig yourself a hole of like, you know, like I didn't do anything this year or that was not good. And you know, like this is pathetic, like this sucks. And I'm not, I'm not who I'm supposed to be. And 
you can go on and on and on and you can build that deep hole, but that's not going to get you anywhere. So you got to kind of go the other way. You got to go up. Facts. And that's what I've been learning, man. 100%. And I like, I like the fact that you brought up uh, yoga. So, I mean, I'm going to ask you that too. You know, like what's the, what's the biggest benefit that you, that you see uh, yoga giving you? Because I feel like a lot of people, like I, like I see the importance in it, but I feel like a lot of people when I talk to them, they don't really incorporate that into their, their workout regime, you know? It's yeah, like, man. Yeah. Um, there, I've met countless physiotherapists who have told me that like people should do more yoga, like bodybuilder or not, like even athlete or, or not specifically bought athletes and bodybuilders and like yoga is is such a powerful tool to use and if you use it right and if you do the right thing is it will really start to like unlock your body you know and it's been uh it's been cool because i've been i've been learning a lot from yoga and i've even like learned things that i've implemented implemented excuse me with my excuse me with my clients you know yeah and uh like a lot of things i've done with with yoga classes i've learned myself so it's been uh, a learning curve for me in that regard as well, you know, but it's, it's really beneficial. I really, I love doing yoga. It's been, it's been super cool for me. That's so cool, yo. Man, yo, Mate over here giving us the full, full disclosure. <laughs> oh, it's great. Yeah, man. I love it. Always, always. Yeah. Frank, you got any, uh, any other questions? I was about to say, are you motivated right now? I feel like I want to yeah, start oh. bodybuilding right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to work on these now, you know? Like. <laughs> yo, looking good, man. You didn't even lose some size from the last time I saw you. Oh, really? Hey, man, yo, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm trying, I'm trying you know, it could be low, it could be low. <laughs> you give me, you know? I take what you give me, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. anybody who wants a good yeah. personal trainer or sorry a great personal trainer man shout out to this man right here because you know he, he gave me a lot of good tips that still work for me today so appreciate you know. it dude thank <laughs> yeah. you thank you Kalilo. nothing but the truth yeah yeah okay oh, yeah, Frank, what were you saying <laughs> what was it no i was about to say i know what you're trying to do with the whole flexing <laughs> the girl the girls are looking on the podcast they'll, they'll be looking. <laughs> I'm, I'm still taking resumes now you know so <laughs> yeah, that's good that's good that's yeah. funny any Wait, more question, Khalilo, for our man? Uh, uh, let's see, man. Yo, I mean, if anything, we got to have a part two with you. So, you know, we look forward to your updates, especially, you know, yeah. with the injury, man. Once you get back up, you know, we, we look forward to uh, what you think about, you know, your future, how you're going to handle things. And, like, you know, seeing you and seeing, like, you know, other people seeing what you do, I feel like that, that that's uh, enough in motiv motivation for themselves, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks, so we look forward to having you again, man. And once you're on this show, man, or once you're on this podcast, you're always welcome to come back. Yeah, yeah. appreciate yeah. that, man. Yeah. I love, I love hanging out with you guys. That was cool. I really like this. <laughs> awesome, yeah, awesome. Great. And uh, thank you, man. Want to want to tip us off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll finish it up with our little segment. You know, music for days segment. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. So we yeah. got to bring new song for our fans for days. Uh, you right. know, you know, my role always go last. So I'm gonna give the light to the first two here. So who wants to start? Who has a song in mind? Mate or Khalilo? Up to yeah, you. man. Uh, <laughs> lately, honestly, like uh, the new Post Malone song, Motley Crue, I've been <laughs> busting that out, and it's been it's been su suiting my fancy. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> all, right, all right, yeah, I like that. I like that. Post that's Malone. Good. Yeah, that's still. I think that's a that's the first first person we actually mentioned Post Malone song in our whole play stuff yeah, since we like, started. Yeah. But he's so popular, I would think. People would just, you know, put post more after post more, but I like that one. That's a good pick. Okay. I track, man. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Khalilo? What you me, man, uh, let's see. It's a song that I heard recently, and uh, it's just, yeah. I shazammed it. I loved it. So I'm, uh, I'm going to toss it to you guys, too. So it's uh, Love Somebody by Rotimi. So check that oh, out. I know Rotimi. Yeah, I like him. Do you know the track, Love Somebody? Maybe like, not that track. Like You'd be proud of me for, for like, uh, shouting that out this Is it R&B style or no? Is it more? R&B styles, yep. Yeah. <laughs> this man's like, I turned him. <laughs> <laughs> Converted you to the R&B world. Thank you very much. Sure, yes, yeah. sir. Cool so okay. That's, my, that's uh, our songs for today. What about you, Rev? Let's see. So I got a, actually a French song for this week. Uh, okay. It's a girl by the name of uh, Holy uh, Brun, and it's uh, Nuit Noir. But she makes English music, too. But that song is like, it's like in French. I don't know. I just, it's an interesting vibe. It's not to say maybe I don't really listen to that music like that sometimes, but I don't know. That song is different. I really like it. So nice. I think. It's something about French music that like hits different. So, you know, I look forward to listening to that track. <laughs> sure, Hi, sure. Okay. Cool. So we got our songs. So again, Mate, thank you very much for being on Conversation for Days podcast. Like we said, you're welcome to come back. We can even maybe bring you to other guests. We can maybe talk about another topic too. We'll see about that. You know, we'll make we'll make sure to bring you back. And uh, just one more time, 
give our, our fans your social where they can find you reach you yes yeah man i'm uh, i'm all over instagram so you can find me at mcx fitness and that'll be i'll be there i'll be there waiting for you guys <laughs> awesome. Awesome. dm this man for, for a good session yo <laughs> thanks man appreciate that all right so i was you know once, once again it's a pleasure having you here uh mm-hmm. shout out to our fans for days out there that are you know absorbing this good content uh you know much love to everybody always stay safe happy and healthy always wealthy too you know <laughs> you know what it is and we look forward to having you on the next episode or seeing you guys on the next episode so stay tuned yeah. and stay well and we'll be back right. next week yes thanks week. fellas pleasure right. thank yeah. you for the time frankie Kalilo. you guys have been great man appreciate that <laughs> all right see you on the next one huh take care yes. appreciate that <laughs>